or who have served in the military, with a number of events planned around the country. Joining me to discuss this is veteran Steve Masters, a former RAF engineer. Steve, thanks very much for joining me today. Hi. Um, so, nice, to, nice to be here, Andrew. And to what extent have uh, the, the, the celebrations been impacted as a result of these strikes? Well, to be honest, I don't think they've been impacted that much. Um, you know, many people would have celebrated Armed Forces Day locally to where they um, reside, you know, in local towns, villages, etc. In the city, of, you know, in, the, in London itself, people would have been able to uh, cycle to any um, events um, and use use the buses as well. So, um, I, you know, I think the hyperbole that was used by you know MPs from the government earlier in the week trying to enforce division um, is, you know, is highly uh, dis you know, disrespectful to members of the armed forces who are serving, members of, uh, you know, former members of the services, many of whom work on the railways and the transport network and are probably um, in, the, you know, in the strike action themselves. So I think, you know, it's, it, it's another, another way of the government to, you know, put those seeds of division into the general public without actually really giving the public the you know the true facts so your feeling is that the uh, the fact that it's armed forces day is, is just being used as a kind of political tool uh by the government to sort of say well you can't go on strike because you might upset a lot of people while they're attempting to celebrate you think that's what what's happened here um i think that was the motives when uh, jonathan um uh, gullis um spoke um you know on um, on, on the tv earlier in the week and he was he was trying to uh, Put a wedge in that uh, that area, and we saw a little bit of pushback, um, you know, modest amount on on social media. But I think overwhelmingly the public, um, you know, are, are supporting uh, the the strike, not least because many of them are facing the same cost of living you know, challenges that uh, the the railway workers, you know, are, are facing. But you can appreciate that a lot of people are frustrated, uh, not just because of the lack of inconvenience, but. You know, they see the people going on strike that might be earning a lot more than they are, and barristers are even striking, and 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 the teachers. And you know, when teachers strike, of course, the inconvenience there is is through the roof, and people's sympathy starts to wane, doesn't it? Um, I, I I don't think that the sympathy necessarily wanes, you know, with the general public. I think you know a lot of the the media narrative will tell you that the you know, the sympathy is is um you know not you know with the strikers, but. You know, it, it's got to be remembered that this is not, you know, the, you know, it's been levelled, and even today, I think the prime minister has spoken about how high wages are for rail, you know, for train drivers. This is not the train drivers who are um, on strike at the moment. This is the support workers. This is the t the ticket office workers. You know, the, the you know the the uh, railway attendants. I mean, you know, people who you know are earning between twenty and thirty thousand pounds a year. They are. Which you know, you know, many of them are below the uh, the national average of salaries and haven't seen a, a decent pay rise in uh, in many years. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for joining me tonight. I want to bring my panel in here, um, Dr. Cassidy. I mean, do you have any thoughts about the strike?